All right, welcome everybody to the first episode of a new show we're going to be trying to do here each week. This is Indie Inquiries, where for the show, Shark and I are going to look at the latest or upcoming indie games that we spot, picking some of the weird, unusual, or some of the really solid ones that we see, and we're going to examine their pages in terms of marketing, presentation, and what other developers can take notes of. Now, this is our first episode, so if you have any comments about things, please let us know what, whether you're watching this live or recorded. For uh, new people watching us who want to know kind of what our backgrounds are, my name is Josh Blaster. I run the site Game Wisdom, and I have about eight years of experience studying game design, and I am also a three-time author with a fourth book in the works. And I'm Shirky Shark, also known as Jim Tinkersley, and... Uh... I am an indie developer, head of a uh, CEO of Nexus Games, and currently making the game Neon Continuum, which is uh, hopefully going to be the latest craze coming soon. There we go. So, uh, for uh, each week, we've each picked out several games that we're going to look at, and we're going to, unlike our regular live shows that we hold on Sundays to save the extreme cast, these episodes are going to be limited to about an hour. So if we do go over it, we are going to kind of keep these games as reserved for next week's show. So this will not be our standard two to three hour cast here. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> no. And for those of you new watching, if you want to watch us talk regularly about game design topics, tune into our Sunday show again, the Safely Extreme cast, starting around 4 to 4.30 ET. But... Uh, we are kind of still working out the kinks of our new interface and such, so uh, we're kind of using our old, say, the Extreme Cast one for this show. But yeah, uh, let we well, gotta, we, I've got to make us a new one for this one. Mm -hmm. But uh, let us begin with one of my picks. This is Devil Edge. And this is a game that, as we look over here, again, maybe a little hard to see. I'm not sure how things are looking on YouTube-wise. But it has all the genres attached to it. It is a strategy simulation, RPG, racing, indie, casual, adventure, action game. I think they're just missing visual novel, first-person shooter, um, dating sim, right? Yeah, that's coming in the sequel. Good. Devil's Edge instead of Devil Edge, you know. Add that S. So according to the description, this is a magic and adventure action game. So I guess we learn magic in this game too. Yeah, I mean, what else are we going to learn? The meaning of life? Mm -hmm. The game designed a number of demons scene. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, yeah. It kind of, I think, again, nothing will be taunting in a splash that we learned from that other indie game the other night. That is a new <laughs> meme, I think, for this channel. Got a taunt in a splash. The high difficulty level design, the unceasingly rich magic skill, the striking feeling the striking feeling full movement will let you indulge in it. Do you know what I just said there? No, but that's that's pretty usual at the same time. New skill page with game on stream. Yeah, I'm going. I think to make things easier, I think I'm just going to switch to my layout. It may not look as good, but at least it'll be a lot easier for people to read everything. Yeah. And let me drop the logo here, not to, so we don't confuse things. That should be easier for everyone to see. Now, if you can't see it, then we have a bit of an issue. <laughs> I might swap to mine as well. Yeah, so, I don't know what this paragraph right here means. Or actually, I should just say this sentence right here. And this, I think, is our first kind of lesson for this episode that if you're going to try and sell me or sell somebody on your game we need to understand what your game is about 
I don't understand what unceasingly rich magic means. What is magic in this game? I don't yeah. know. And there's a part about difficulty, you know, and we all know that the the harder a game is, the better it is, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I just noticed this one. This is not an action game. It's an act game on Steam. I guess we act yeah. in this. Maybe it's improv. It's an action game. Mm. We spent two years designing the game. So we have screenshots here. Art-wise, I've seen worse, but everything is nondescript. I don't see a character. Yeah, it's... Not only is it... It, it doesn't fit together either. It feels a little bit mismatched. Uh, let's see. And these extreme zoom out views, it's like, uh, what is what is that? It looks like they're trying to show off the art. By letting you see less of it. Mm -hmm. Or more quantity and less detail. Mm-hmm. But, That's a great way to show off your art by by killing all the detail out of it, <laughs> kill the appearance out of the art. But again, my problem with this is that I see nothing in terms of level design. I don't see any gameplay. I'm just not really seeing anything that sells me on this game. Yeah, not seeing any characters. Yes, I, I know, uh, Nikita. It's a racing simulation strategy game. That's another yeah. thing. You have to be real. If you're going to do genre tags, I think it's ultimately better to focus on the ones that fit your game. Yeah. While listing all the genres may make it easier to find you, the fact is, is when they find you, they're not going to know what you are and then skip right past. Mm hmm. Person. And again, there could be a really good game here, but with this page, I see nothing about what what it is. I don't even see a character. Mm -hmm. There's nothing here that tells us what the game is, other than this mismatch of genres or the which... description that I don't think. It... It sounds like English was not the first language of the developer. Yeah, it. I don't know. Like, I kind of think the English might have been in this first person's language. They just spelled really hard at it. Because it's not like all, a lot of words are misspelled, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They They got a lot of the words spelled right, which means that. More than likely, they actually know some, you know, English was more than likely their mm -hmm. first language. They just weren't any good at it. Mm. Like, I would say the first screenshot, at least from an art standpoint, is probably their best one. Mm -hmm. Has a good look to it. You can see kind of the different layers of the background. And then it just kind of goes downhill from there yeah and my guess how does it play that's a good question that we don't know the answer to it's a mystery it's a you imagine how it plays yeah use your imagination and again what we say and what will probably be a very common theme for these episodes is that the screenshots you can have just kind of, you know, art screenshots, but I need to see something that is gameplay. Not just, you know, like the most gameplay I think in this would be the, what is that, three, the sixth thumbnail that shows what looks like an explosion. I don't even see a main character in this one. That's exploding the ground. <laughs> You need the ground explosions, right? Mm-hmm. 
So I guess, uh, well, I guess to wrap up for this game, then we'll move on to the next one. So what would you say, besides, of course, a, an editor for the description, what else do you think this page needs to get somebody to check this game out? It needs better screenshots, for sure. Mm -hmm. With, preferably, characters or such in there, if it is characters, it needs refining on the genre, and it needs to, you know, tell us what this gameplay loop is, because... I'm not seeing anything on a game loop. Like, what, what, mm -hmm. I could look at, uh, you know, um, this looks like if, if I took Mario Maker and, and turned off all the UI for it so you couldn't tell what it is, mm -hmm. I could probably still tell better what it was than I can tell this. Yeah. And as you can see, there's no UI on any of the screenshots. Yeah. And you, UI, while it does clutter up the interface and makes it, you know, um, makes it uh, less clean kind of thing, it, 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 there, was a, there was a study done mm -hmm. and, um, on GDC. Um, and, well, not on GDC. There was a video on GDC after that mm -hmm. talking about, um, you know, what consumers look for. And the very, very first thing consumers look for is what genre the game is. Mm -hmm. They're not looking at the genre tags. They're looking at the screenshots for what genre the game is because who knows what got labeled in the tags. Mm -hmm. And when they, when there's no UI, no, no, none of that in any of the screenshots because it's all been turned off, they're most likely going to pass on it because they can't tell what even genre the game is. Mm -hmm. So you need to make your genre very, very apparent in your screenshot. Yeah. And don't do zoomed out, you know, views that you can't even see naturally in the game. Mm -hmm. Do real screenshots. Mm -hmm. If you can't see it in the game like that, don't take a photo of it. Mm -hmm. So Because number one, that's, that's lying to the consumer because that's unrealistic and uh not actually in the game and number two you're you're often going to screw yourself over by doing that mm -hmm. yep and i agree with you on those points so with that uh let's move on to sharks first peg and we both had to kind of call our list we were picking games like similar here mm -hmm. and let's see if i can pronounce it without getting a d mod this is Shatris Infinite Puzzles. I'm pretty sure we're still getting a D mod for this one. I mean, Shaq wanted to play Pet Tetris, so you know he made Shaktris. Mm hmm. And he has infinite puzzles. You think that's enough puzzles? No, you need infinity plus one. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're so right there. But. And uh, to Matthew's comment, yeah, it would be either action adventure or probably more open world uh, for Spider Man. But yeah, so let's take a look at this one. Yeah, so um, we all know that more levels equals better, right? There, there's there's no point when you know when you know people get tired of your game because you're not introducing anything new. And they just want to keep on playing the same old thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Infinite Puzzles is a very bad name, if but, not... Uh... But that's a lie, because if we look at this, the description, it says there's only 500 man-made puzzles. Yeah. There's a random generator. Well, apparently, 500 is infinite. We have a confirmation now. 500 is infinite. Mm-hmm. Although I'm betting that 500 is way too many puzzles for a game like this. Mm. So on the positives... Even 100 is... So let's talk about the positives first. One, I think they got the genre tags, right? They could probably put puzzle in for the genre, although I'm not sure there is a puzzle genre for it. Mm -hmm. Art-wise, for what they're going for, Every screenshot looks consistent. It shows us a UI. Like, from a screenshot standpoint, I think it's good. Are these the best screenshots for video games? No. But I think for this game, 
I think this is the best they could have done. Yeah. Except for doing better on their art because I yeah. think the backgrounds are a little bit too busy because they mm-hmm. the backgrounds draw your eye more than the the tiles do that you're playing with. And you don't want that. You want the, the tiles to draw more interest than the background. Mm-hmm. And they have the opposite going here. So from looking at so here's one of the challenges of like these kinds of games. When I look at this thumbnail or any of these thumbnails, I don't know what my gameplay is. I don't know what the goal is or what I'm trying to do. But mm-hmm. when I look at this GIF, I think it that makes a lot more sense. So this one, I know what this gameplay loop is. It looks like we have to fill up the board using the patterns that you see on the right-hand side. Mm-hmm. Although you're probably scored based off of... some manner, or maybe it's just a one way to solve it, period. Well, according to this, where's the description? Uh... All cells on the screen with the help of certain small shapes. Each shape can be used multiple times to draw levels on multiple correct solutions. Every puzzle will be between one and five blocks to choose from. Now, one thing that I don't like about this UI, the more that I look at it, that if you look at the screenshot, mm-hmm. and it shows you what your shapes are, What's confusing me is that it's showing me a full block, but only the circles that are highlighted or kind of like lit up are the ones that count. I think from a presentation standpoint, it would have been better just to show me the shape itself rather than just show me a block with certain parts kind of cut out. Well, it might be hard to relay that on some of the shapes. Yeah. They probably did that out of a usability thing. Mm hmm. Because I doubt. I bet you they ran into a problem of just showing the the highlighted ones Mm -hmm. caused it to uh, not be readable. Mm. So it does look very mobily though on the UI. Man, you're looking at like these three big circles on the left hand side of the screen. Mm Mm-hmm. And it may be on mobile too. Mm Mm-hmm. I would say this one is better than the last game in terms of overall presentation. The thing that mm-hmm. does hurt it, though, is the name. Because yeah. for those of you who are new or watching us for the first time, when you search for a name on Steam or any site, the person has to type things in perfectly. So if they misspell one letter, one number, whatever symbol you have in there, they are not going to find your game. This is also why naming video games is very difficult and probably its own discussion at some point. And you got it. We, we've already discussed it, actually. That's why that's for the uh, podcast where we came up with the term Safeway Stream, which we mm-hmm. named the other podcast after. Yeah. So this name. Here, like, here's the problem here. What does Shatris actually mean for this kind of puzzle design? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think it means anything. I think it's just a random name. Mm-hmm. Other than the Tris part, you know, after Tetris. Yeah. It's like, let's just call it Tetris, but, you know, change up the first couple of letters. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 <laughs> what I would have called it would be Shark Tris, you know. <laughs> and Get put, good like, Tris. Ever, everything after Sharks. Yeah. So I, like I said, I think this one has a much better footing than the last game. Mm-hmm. But the name, I think, is going to kill it. And I think from a marketing standpoint, I don't see somebody playing 500 puzzles for this. Yeah, I don't see somebody even playing 100 of them. Yeah. But... 
I would say that the the audience for this would probably be highly limited. Yeah. But I mean, like, it looks like they designed it fairly well for what it yeah. is. It's, it's just, very clean too. It's just there's not much here. Yeah. Very le- very little meat on the bone, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Podium most chartress himself. <laughs> There's a D mod. <laughs> All right. Uh, so with that, let us move over to Colossus Down. And why did you pick this game, Josh? The first thing that it kind of saw to me was the art. It kind of has like that Adventure Time kind of look to it. Hmm. Also, in that very first screenshot, it looks very, very busy. Oh, yes. Kind of reminds me a little bit like if Adventure Time and Alien Hominid were combined. Kind of, yeah. So, some of the GIFs look alright. Again, it really has an Adventure Time look to it. Probably one of their lead inspirations, art-wise. Mission. So it's co-op. Oh, we have endless strategic combos. <laughs> Scarlet Vomit. Innumerable Challenge. Combination of beat em up, shoot em up, platforming, and puzzles. Oh, man, they're trying to hit all the action genres, aren't they? Yeah. They probably. It sounds like they might be going too far. Take crucial and thought-provoking decisions during your quest and discover the four alternate endings. Complete the mission with infinite lives or permadeath. So, this to me... Thank you, Matthew. This sounds like one of those every games. Where a developer is trying to put everything and anything they can think of into the title... And kind of mm-hmm. stuff it with features. So this would be the opposite of the last game. Too much features, not enough uh, time spent on the features. And that, and unfortunately, that's something we don't know through screenshots. Well, the last GIF kind of says there's not not enough, at least to me. Hmm. Let's see. Say Care Bear. Mm-hmm. Like it seemed like when you when you do the shots and everything with these creature with your characters and everything, mm-hmm. there's very limited control, if any, over them. Mm. Let me see. Because like when the the mich- the cannon shoots up, it just shoots in random places, and then at the other one, when it jumps up, it looks like it's a pre-described angle to where it shoots, mm. basically like a jump kit kind of thing. Mm. It doesn't look like there's really much to the shooting. Mm-hmm. And to Pony's point, that's what I was thinking of the descriptors. With everything in there, that sounds very much like um, Battletoads. Yeah. Sadly, that game did not turn out better than what it did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, let's take a look at these screenshots. Uh, yeah, like the first one, it is very busy. I would honestly maybe have switched the first and the second one and make the second one the first thing that you see. Yeah. Especially with that bike, that motorbike. That looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, third one. And he also has the animation there playing with the uh, streak of white. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thumbnails are not bad. Again, if you're not a fan of this kind of art style, it will not change your mind. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it, but I, I think they're pretty good thumbnails. Mm-hmm. So we have like a platforming level... We have decision making. Yeah, the the platforming level just seems like it's going to be completely out of place. Could be. 
It's going to feel really <laughs> just <laughs> Let's see, we have a boss fight. Also, that that one right before the boss fight, where it's showing the a menu. Oh, that's that's menu. That's just main menu. Okay, yeah. I thought that was a gameplay puzzle for there for a <laughs> second. <laughs> that that menu doesn't really fit the rest of the game, though. It doesn't have the same statics. It it feels mm -hmm. completely out of place. Yeah. Yeah. So, like from this art. Or just from these screenshots, it doesn't look too bad in terms of these of the gameplay. Now, <laughs> again, the challenge though is that the more genres you put into a game, the harder it is to make every one of them pop. Like the second to last screenshot of the puzzle, I'm not sure what this puzzle actually is. Yeah. And of course, this doesn't apply to stuff that's like uh, meant for this for a lot of little things, like uh, mm -hmm. like a uh, Mario or not Mario Wario, mm -hmm. where kind of game, because those are meant to be a whole bunch of mini games. Mm -hmm. That that the way it pops is by having a lot of them and a lot of difference between them, and that they're all fun mm -hmm. in their own minimum, you know. Uh, yeah, and that, and that right there is an issue. Like, if your game is built on three different genres and one of them does not work, then it essentially becomes a punishment for the player to get through in order to get back to the good stuff. As we kind of saw with there with the uh, latest Battletoads take on uh, the Turbo Tunnel. Yep. I think we're going to put in for a key for this one. Because, again, I like action games. I did play Battletoads, so... Maybe I'll be able to get something out of it. But yeah. overall, I would say I would put this in the good category. Not, you know, great, but it's showing me some good things. I like mm -hmm. the gifts. I mean, you can tell that they really put a lot into their art in this game. Yeah. Which is absolutely necessary in today's market. Mm hmm. Like, like, I think it's a pretty well done store page. Mm -hmm. Unsure how the game will, you know, I, I doubt the game is going to hold up. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the, the store page was done pretty well. I just realized that the main character in the first and second thumbnail is like a demonic pig. <laughs> <laughs> is that the main character? Or? I don't know. I I think that this might be like a choose your own character kind of thing. Mm. Like uh like Ninja Turtles where you picked Leonardo Raphael or Donatello mm -hmm. and you know the pigs, you know, I don't know, Raphael right. and the machines Leonardo or something. <laughs> All right. But with that, uh let's switch over to your game uh Fish Harvest to... Island. Okay, uh, you oh. want to do... We can do Fish to Cups. Okay. So, with Vistage Cups, like, are you seeing anything right away? Yeah, I don't see any fists. I don't see, like, fighting. I just see lots of noise. Almost. No, it's, it's, it's fists. It's, it's, it's fish teacups. Mm -hmm. There are definitely fish. But that's not what I was talking about. What I was talking about is the aspect ratio. Mm. Like, when you look... When you compare a game right beside it, you can see that the aspect ratio changes quite a bit. Mm -hmm. This is like four to three. This is like four to three ratio or something along that line. Something or something unique. And and this is not going to play well on any monitor that uh, is not old as mm -hmm. crap. And uh, you know pre. LCD kind of thing. And, uh, you know, they're going to full screen it and they're going to have black bars on the side Probably. or it's just going to horribly skew the image and make it all stretched out and look horrible. Mm -hmm. that, that is very, very bad. They need to design it in the current mm -hmm. uh, ratios. So here's the... Like, and now when we get to actual screenshots themselves, first screenshot... 
shows me very little. Second screenshot, my eyes are hurting from all the things I'm trying to process. And mm -hmm. by the third screenshot, I have no idea what's actually happening on the screen. Yeah. But I don't even see you on the third screenshot. Yeah. It's Where's Waldo, the shmup. I think if you could see yourself on the third screenshot, the third screenshot would be the best one. Mm. At least the ones we've looked at so far. Yeah, like the fourth one, I don't even, I still don't see myself. Yeah, I don't either. Fifth one, no. no. And so on the only one we were see ourselves is the first one. Yeah. And on the sixth one, there's a big problem here. You can see the kind of red fish are being you have red fish on a red background yeah that's you, an issue now they do have the white outline over them which helps a little bit but you need to be really careful about how your foreground and background elements interact with each other mm -hmm. you gotta have enough contrast in between them mm -hmm. and it's not any contrast because those are the exact same colors just with a white outline because yeah. that is the darker two reds that make up the fish that is the same exact two colors that uh, are on the background. Mm -hmm. Like the, you know, like the big dark areas, that's the same as the eye and the uh, little divider there at the tail. And then they, you look at the darkest color off of that, and mm -hmm. that's the color of the fish. Yeah. They definitely needed help with their palette slash background colors. Mm-hmm. Of course, if you look at the, like, uh, I think it's the third screenshot, you have another case of that background, but you don't see the red fish. Mm -hmm. And the description of this game is more of a short novel that really doesn't tell me what is going on. You know, if they put some gifs in there to break it up, yeah, it would probably be fine at that length. But they need GIFs in here to break it up. Mm -hmm. Something to show me what this game is like in action. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if you do have at, if you are building an action game, you should have a gift of that actual of the actual action. <laughs> you should have a gift either way, even yeah. if it's turn based, because you need to show more of your game and have a more decorated. Page. Mm -hmm. Now then, I'm I'm unsure exactly how Key Miller works, but I'm pretty sure it just copies and pastes whatever's on your Steam page. I think it does because I know I have a bunch of information on my it, on the, my Key Miller page for Chromasia, but I didn't put any of it in there. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Here. You actually look this up really fast. Fist of cuffs. Fish to cuffs. Get it right, okay. Josh. Let's see. Yep, it's exactly the same page. Mm -hmm. Now there is now here's something interesting. There is a video on the store page on Steam. So I'm actually seeing the game animate there, which I should be able to Let's see. Yeah, I, I think they, I think they, uh, that uh, Key Miller ignores the, the trailers unless it is only a trailer. That's the mm -hmm. reason why you get these, you know, rare few that have just a video kind mm -hmm. of thing and no screenshots kind of thing. And I'm pretty sure if you look those up, that's all they have is a video, no screenshots mm -hmm. on their Steam page. Where I, Key Mallor pretty much only uses screenshots unless there is literally nothing else mm -hmm. but a video. So the, the screen, the, the uh, video, I think, looks, I think it makes him look a little bit better, but it's still hard to know what is going on. Mm hmm. One thing can be said about this game. This is the newest iteration of Go Fish. Mm -hmm. Seems a little fishy to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me hop.
pop that over here. So, with the video in mind, it's not horrible, but this is one of those games where the screenshots aren't selling the game, and that's not a good thing. Yeah. You need the screenshots to sell the game, not just a trailer. Mm hmm Because if the screenshots don't sell, there's no point in putting them on here. Yep. And you want screenshots. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's move on, then. That was Fisticuffs. Uh, all right, let's take a look at The Trap. Which looks like Black the Game. Black mm -hmm. and Blue the Game. And I'm glad that I picked this one. Uh, for our first show, because we get to talk about the mistake a lot of indie developers make when it comes to horror. And that is screenshots like this. Anyone knows what's happening in these screenshots? Yeah, black. With a little black. bit of light. Black and blue with, with, with a flashlight that probably runs out. And there's no UI. Mm -hmm. well, wait, there's a little Remember, lighting icon in the upper left. Yeah, but it's only on certain screenshots. It's not on, like, the third one, I think that is. Mm, let's see. Yep, you're right. Like, and here's but another there, bit of a There's problem. some nondescript battery-like icons up in the other top corner, though. I, I didn't even see that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. They that that UI is not clear. The UI all. is a trap. Yeah, like the game. So there are several big problems. The first one again is that I see no gameplay. There, it's just black. The second issue is I'm not even sure. Or actually, I kind of know what I have an idea what this perspective is. But for the layman, how do you even play this game? Is this a? Am I looking at this first person? Is it side-scrolling? From what I'm looking at these screenshots, it looks to be top-down. I hope it's top-down, because if it's not, then I have no idea what this game is. Yeah. And the other issue is not with the actual screenshots, but with the game itself of being so damn dark. Mm -hmm. You don't want a game that is just black. Yeah. You and want this... to make black the game. And this is what we see from just about almost like every indie developer who makes a horror game will go over the same style. That it's a nondescript room. It's a dark hallway. It's a dark forest path. And then maybe one screenshot with a poorly 3D model of a monster. Mm. And with this description, you get whole set of phobias. You get all the phobias. Yeah, and, you know, there's a difference between being dark and being basically black. Mm -hmm. Also, I love this third description. Some traps are arcade, while some will require your imagination to pass by. I don't know what that means. I mean, it's a power of imagination. Your, 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 uh game plugs into your brain and and it it measures the amount of imagination you have and if you're not imagining hard enough then you're not going to make it past that trap oh no it's a the world surrounding you is hardcore wait every item wait even the items are going to kill you well that's great <laughs> every mm -hmm. item in trap will do their best to make you start from the beginning Oh, that that's a that's a lot of red flags right there. Mm -hmm. Not only are the items going to try to kill you, but start from the beginning. You know, um, that's uh, every five. You know, every like twenty seconds, you're going to start the game over. Have fun. Mm -hmm. And I love the final description: scary, atmospheric, graphic, and sounds. You get one graphic in this game, and it's dark. And it'll make you feel like you're really there. Mm -hmm. In the dark. <laughs> yeah, it'll make you feel like you're you're in a room where you cannot see anything at all. 
because everything's black. You have to play the game with the lights off and actually be in a room that's completely dark to in order to have a chance at playing this game. And that's feast. why you're going to feel like you're already there because you are already there. You're already in a black room. Mm-hmm. And you get all the phobias. Mm-hmm. So, again, this game falls in that same problem as the first one, but even worse. Completely nondescript. Nothing is showing me gameplay. And why should I play this game? Yeah, I'm thinking that this is the worst example so far. I don't know. I think we've seen some on the other shows, but maybe for this show, this is the worst. Yeah, I'm talking about this show. Yeah. Then we have to lay things up, Matthew. And then we have to see all the assets. Yeah. All right. Uh, let us move on to Harvest Island Beginnings. So this one looks very much like a Dardu Valley kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But stranded on an island kind of thing. And it's an interesting concept. Hmm. But, you know, there's a, you know, some issues where I'm I'm going through all these screenshots and all I see is the same sand, the same rock, and the same one tree. And a couple of very, very cheap dialogue boxes that look really basic and yeah. water. And like, they, you know, oh, and that little flower thing. It's like five or six assets here in like all of these screenshots. Yeah, you can see like if you if you look very fast it doesn't look like it, but the more you look at these screenshots, it is just literally copying and pasting one tree. They they, they have like like seven or eight rocks. But one tree. But one tree and two characters, and one really basic UI box that looks very, very cheap. Yeah. For a second, I thought it was like an RPG Maker box. It does look like that. It very well could be. I mean, like, if you scroll down and look at their, uh, their little images kind of thing, their Discord image and their blog, the blog image, I believe, is the same image as the Discord one, just zoomed in. With an outline around it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and the GIF just shows stuff that was already shown in the screenshots. Now, according to the description, it's a demo, so it has 15 to 30 minutes of gameplay. But again, my problem is I don't see any gameplay in these screenshots. Yeah. I don't see any assets in these screenshots besides rocks i think there's more rocks in the i think the rocks are like over half of the assets in the game <laughs> and this isn't a rock paper scissors game like my last one so like it doesn't make sense in this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so again the problem is that i'm seeing nothing about this gameplay i mean if you're gonna have a gif right here Show the player picking stuff up. Show them looking around. Not a cutscene. Mm -hmm. Unless you unless you're going to have that on top of the other. Mm -hmm. And like if you look at if you look at all the screenshots, they're almost all in the cutscene too. Mm -hmm. Except for I think one. Yeah. But no, two because the last mm -hmm. one supposedly is in a screenshot. Uh, supposedly in the cutscene. Yeah. It's using the same cutscene box, but it's, you know, gameplay, supposedly. And I like the, uh, like, may I have you point out the description? You can catch a raccoon and experience cuteness. Is that what it says in here? Mm-hmm. Experience all the cuteness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the last <clears throat> feature. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's a feature. So again, there's nothing really here that's selling this game. No. There's stuff selling the game to the negative side. Mm-hmm. 
because it doesn't look like there's much here. Mm-hmm. And I mean, there's not much here because it's 10 to 15 minutes. There are 30, 15 to 30 minutes. I'm wondering how much of that time is cutscene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing Could be probably 10 minutes. About 10 to 20 minutes of it is, is, is mm-hmm. uh, cutscenes. I'm like, five minutes is randomly picking up crap that doesn't matter. And then mm-hmm. taking it to this altar here. This, this altar is probably the, the, the thing in the gym is probably the end of the demo. Could be. You probably just do a cutscene, a bunch of cutscenes, and then you go pick up like the, what is it that it shows in that like uh, last screenshot? You you go pick up the three crabs, the seven star blue starfish, and the ten coconuts, come to the th- altar, turn them in, you know, offer them, and then that's the end of the demo. Mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure... That's what it is. Yeah. All right. <laughs> My voice is really dying yeah. already. <clears throat> oh. We'll see if I can make it through the remaining games. But uh, let's move on to Penelope. This is a game that both of us chose. Did we? I think so. I don't think I, I, don't think I chose this one. All right. Then maybe I may have just clicked on my thing twice. <laughs> but uh, this is a game that I picked because... I just wasn't sh- This is none of those games that... It sounds like it could be interesting, but it also has some red flags in terms of these screenshots. Yeah, like those keyholes. Look very uh, acid to me, like acid flipping. Yeah, it looks more like they just took a block and they colored it red and put a little keyhole symbol in it. And it's not an asset because like they don't make assets generally that bad. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Now you can manipulate your dreams in this challenging puzzle. Rescue all Penelope's stuffed animal friends before you run out of warm milk. Can you outwit the dastardly Emily Watterson? I don't know. Are we supposed to know who these characters are? Probably. Oh, solve dozens of puzzles ranging from easy to mind-bogglingly difficult. Strategically wet the bed. Strategically put the bed. <laughs> Use the power uh, of your right. stuff. That that's that's the new meme of the channel. Mm. Or channels. You need mm. to strategically wet the bed. <laughs> so and again, that. this is a game or this is a title that really needs a gif to show me what is going on. Because these screenshots are not doing it. Yeah. Nothing is doing it for me. Mm-hmm. Other than the strategically wetting the bed, that is the the only the only part that's doing it for me. Well, according to one of these screenshots of the menu, you can go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, would you go to the bathroom? If you go to the bathroom, then you can't strategically wet the bed. Mm-hmm. You're strategically not wet in the bed at that point, and that's that's <laughs> not good. You want to strategically wet the bed. Yeah. Thank you, Mojo. Well, if we see that in the next Fallout game, we'll know who to thank. (laughs) So, (laughs) I am not sure, again, what the goal is of of these levels. I'm not even sure what these, anything here is, other than a train wreck. Mm. And and strategically wet in the bed. This feels like a first game to me. Like somebody's first game they wanted to put up. Yeah. I don't know. This is seeming like their first game jam or something. Not even the first game. Mm. Like I've seen stuff that looks way, way better than this in a three day game jam. Hmm. I really hope this wasn't made by like a like a little girl who's watching this now was like ripping apart her games. Well, if it was made by a five, ten year old girl, this is you know really really good for your age. Mm-hmm. But for you know releasing a game and selling it, this is this is uh, not there. You know. Mm-hmm. Why are those blocks upside down? I can't see what they say. Spoils? 
Well, we know who, who made it. The gameplay is by Emerson. The art's by Bioclips. And the mm. music's by Eva. Mm. Yeah, I know, Mike. <laughs> Grumpy old men reviewing games. <laughs> All right. Uh, Time-wise, I think we have maybe another 10 or so minutes, according to our hour-long or about an hour time limit. Well, let's go to one I really want to go to then. All right, which let's one? Let's go to um, Wave Rider. Okay. Which this one just has a trailer. All right, reach pleasing fast velocities, boost control time. All right, a headphone warning while I click on this. All right, wait, I got it in time. Okay, good. Let's see. There we go. This, I'm, I'm really loving the minimalistic uh, mm -hmm. aesthetic here. Because uh, I, I don't get the deal with the little flat arrow thing. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. But like everything else, like I, I think it looks pretty good aesthetically. You know, yeah. a very minimum aesthetic that looks really good. Of course, you know. Just because it was minimum doesn't mean a lot of work didn't go into it because I'm sure a lot of work went into it, but it's, you know, less work than, I don't know, 3D Spider-Man game. Mm -hmm. It takes worlds less work, but it looks good. and, and It looks good in motion, too, which is important for a game like this. Yeah. And what's important for aesthetics of a game is not the graphical horsepower, not how many 3D models you mm -hmm. have, not how many how big of a world you have or anything like that. What matters is that it's visually pleasing and it has style. Yeah. Because if you go for graphical horsepower, you're never going to be a triple A developer. Yeah. The only way you're, you're going to have to compete to, to even compete on it. You would have to be in basically the triple A space. And if you're in triple A, our games generally look bad. The realistic ones, the ones that compete on horsepower, mm -hmm. generally look bad after about six months. And, you know, more than likely, if you're an indie and you're trying to do that same thing, yours is going to look bad mm -hmm. two years before it comes out. Yeah. Three years before it comes out because you're, you, you don't have the AAA resources. I think I'll put in for a key for this one. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so I think this one may be our best game of this episode. Yeah, I think it's a really solid looking game. Um, they they definitely lacked on their store page. They needed to put some gifs down here and mm -hmm. uh, whatnot. Maybe they show... definitely needed some screenshots. I would like a, a a gif showing the different riders because you have this as a bullet point, and that's one that is not in the movie or in the video yeah yeah and that's another uh, tip i would give developers watching that if your game has any personalization customization anything that lets the player make a decision put that in a gif like so i can see you know hey i can put wear 10 different hats or i can be a green robot or a blue spaceship or whatever like if you have that depth show it off Mm hmm And that's something I definitely did not do with my last game. Mm-hmm. The yeah. word of the day, Chromasia, since I hadn't said it yet. Mm hmm There we go. Yeah, again, you you want to show somebody the wow factor of your title. And screenshots alone sometimes can get there, but only if your game, you know, really presents well. We're talking about maybe a very finely tuned action game, you know, something like Dead Cells or Hollow Knight. For most titles, you're going to need a GIF. Now, having a video certainly helps as well, but again, the more you can show off what makes your game stand out, the better it's going to be. And to uh, Beneb's point about tracks are going to be bland, it's kind of hard to tell if the 
track environment's going to be the focus or just the track layout, you know, intricate turns and twists waiting for you to master them. Yeah. And and they did do good by not putting the company logo at the beginning of uh, of the, the thing. They put the name at the very end and they should have probably put their studio or something at the behind the name of the game or with the name of the game. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they did not put it at the beginning because you don't want to put it at the beginning unless you have no need for these podcasts because you're triple A kind of thing. Uh, what you're saying, Matthew, is that you should not try and compete horsepower wise with any triple A company as any developer. You want to focus on the aesthetics of your game. Yeah, meaning that you shouldn't be going open world. You shouldn't be going uh, high res 3D kind of thing. Realistic. I mean, like, yeah, realistic. You should be going very artsy, very stylistic, not realistic. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, let's see. So, what do you want? What one do you want to go to next of yours? Let's go to this one: missing features 2D. Because if this doesn't have red flags, I think the only thing that's missing are red flags. Yeah. You 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 I go for like the best one and you go for like the worst one. Yeah. Well, it's safely extreme. There's our plug for our Sunday show. Yep. Yeah. So this is a platformer game that, as the name implies, the features are missing. Look how crazy. It's almost like it is, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Mm-hmm. Look, art, like, when it's... When you're actually seeing, like, the art of the game, it doesn't look bad, although the scan lines, I think, are a little annoying. Yeah. It's also a little bit generic, too. Yeah. And the corners are a bit sharp. Mm-hmm. Like, some of the backgrounds look decent. I think they're assets, because I believe I've seen those before. Like, the two mountains, like, on this screenshot, like, this looks right out of Super Mario Brothers, or Super Mario World. Mm Mm-hmm. Ground looks very Sonic to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure most of the stuff in here is assets. Which is the reason why we've said there's nothing wrong with using assets, but the the game needs to look together as a whole. Because like if you look at like uh, the last two screenshots, they don't match the screen two screen, screenshots before. Mm-hmm. They look like it's out of a completely different game, and that's what you want to avoid. Also, this first screenshot, no. This is a horrible first screenshot for someone to look at your game. Mm-hmm. I think that's a horrible screenshot, period. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe that's the issue with the game and not the, the screenshot. But, like, it, you shouldn't be showing off an issue with your game in a screenshot. Yeah. It's like, here's a bad part of the game. Why don't we show that off for the, the screen in the screenshot? Every each level is a surprise. You do not know what you will unlock, so you will need to play to find out. I still don't know what this gameplay is. Finding out where the gameplay is. I like the final description. Yeah, I know the dash is not the same as Celeste. I only know how to do it for both sides. But I promise that there are several other super interesting level mechanics for you to unlock. That tells me that a lot of people have given feedback about the dash being bad or something, and 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 he's not fixed it. Mm. That's what that tells me, because that's, that's very much developer words of... A lot of people complain, and I'm tired of people complaining about it, because, like... I do the same thing when, when I'm looking for feedback on, you know, one specific font, and then they give it on the other fonts, even when I cross them out and I put the, the thing, everybody points out the other fonts. It's like, those are not the new ones. Those are the old ones. Don't judge those kind of thing. And and this is the exact same thing. You know. So another issue I'm noticing in these screenshots is that their adherence to old school, you have the light shining off the TV in the middle on just about every screenshot. It's very distracting. 
and it just serves no purpose. It serves a bad purpose. Yeah. So again, we have that issue that you're telling me there's gameplay, but I am not seeing that in any of the GIFs or screenshots. Yeah, I'm not even seeing... I don't think I've seen a single enemy all the way through here. Maybe you have to unlock the enemies. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's just so many red flags here. Mm -hmm. So, look at this game as what not to do. Yeah, and I like that they had gifts, but you really need to show me a gif of actually unlocking something. A gif of something besides a character jumping and then going back to idle position. Mm -hmm. Or just a basic dash. But the truth is, is that's probably all this game has. So this is probably their best. Mm -hmm. They're probably putting their best yeah. foot forward. I hear that too. Which, which the the thing is, is you want a better, a better. Uh, oh, you have to even unlock the dash. Yeah. So that maybe the only thing you get. Oh no, you have to unlock the player's jump too. So both of these gifs are things you have to unlock. All right. All right, we are about at our hour here, so uh, uh, would we got time for one more, maybe? Yeah, let's do one more. Which one do I want to do? I'm gonna look at my list, see if any of these quickly stand out. Let's see. No. All right, let's go pack for duck. Okay. Here <laughs> <laughs> we have this duck here. Sometimes wearing a paper bag on his head. Killing people with blood spewing everywhere. I like the final one when you're fighting a giant rubber ducky. Yeah. It's hilarious. Ugly ducking came up with a brilliant plan. Ugly duckling decided to rob a bank. This children's story got dark fast. <laughs> yeah. Put a bag on his head and flew off. He's got packages to collect. At least they're not ballots. Apparently you're going to go through various levels dodging mines, enemy bullets, suicide bombers. The story levels blow up everything around and at the end meet the great and terrible a rubber duck. Sounds like there's only one boss in the entire game. Mm hmm And the feature of game. Complexity. Beautiful pixel art. Music. <laughs> Number one, that's not beautiful pixel art. It's somewhat Not passable, but, you know, passable, passable in a normal sense, but not passable for a game. Mm-hmm. And also, for your store page, you don't want to be listing your control scheme. Because that tells me that your game probably doesn't have any menus or anything that in-game tells a player what their controls are. Mm-hmm. That's something that it's not a, oh, uh, game will, you know, game gems you do. Because... Mm -hmm. You don't got time to integrate that stuff in a game jam, generally. Mm-hmm. And complexity is not a good feature. No, it's not. It's a very bad feature. Challenge is a good feature when handled right. You want depth, is yeah. what you want. Also, yeah. why is this an adventure game? I would think you would put action for this. Yeah. It's a good question. Hmm. And I have no ducks in the matter. Your ducks aren't in a row here? No. UI is passable, I would say. Yeah. I'm assuming we have ammo, health, and lives. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would honestly say, like, of this list, like, is which screenshot would you say is the best one? Hmm. I'm kind of leaning towards the third one because it at least has a different background. Yeah, the third one. But, like, I, I have a feeling this, this game only has two levels. The Could one that's be. in the third one and all the others that are the other one. The last one. 
And you can tell that they copied and pasted the bricks in the background as well. It's just a repeating pattern. Yeah, they don't have good tiling or anything. They needed a good... Like, I mean, like, pasting, copy and pasting the bricks is what you do in tiling, but you need a brick that actually tiles, you know, mm-hmm. where, you know, like, this small brick at the end doesn't meet a small brick over here. Like, I think if you were to flip this texture and then alternate them, that would probably tile. Mm-hmm. But you would have to flip every other one. Mm. If you did that, and then got rid of the thick black outlines on the sides where they actually fit together, then mm. it would look world war better. It still wouldn't be great, but it would be world war better. Yeah. I don't think it'd even be mediocre at that point, but it would be still world war better. Yeah. Again, I don't think this is the worst game we, we've seen for tonight's episode. Oh, certainly not. But there's nothing here that is telling me buy this game. And I think this is another one where a gif of you know the duck fighting would have helped out a lot. I mean, I, I don't even see a bank here. And you're going to go rob a bank. I see a rubber ducky. Yeah. Do you see that? Mm. And complexity is not a feature. I don't see what's complex about this. Maybe the control scheme. Maybe you have to press start to jump. Yeah. All right. But I think with that, uh, we, the, I think that should do it for our first episode. We went a little bit over an hour, but I think we did take a look at some interesting games. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for those of you watching this live or record, let us know what you think about the show format. And we're going to try and do these possibly every, like, Wednesday or Thursday, uh, once a week on either a Wednesday or a Thursday, depending on what our schedules are. If you're watching this recorded on my channel, again, uh, tune into our actual game design show, The Safely Extreme Cast, on Sundays around 4, 4.30 ET. And you can follow me on Twitter at GW Bicer, and there are links to my Discord and Patreon in the description. Yeah, and you um, can watch the same Safely Stream podcast on my channel on uh, Sundays at the same time, same place. Well, different place, same time. And uh, you can also catch uh, our dev streams on Fridays. You can catch our game streams on Tuesdays. And uh, you can uh, join our Discord and participate in our once-a-month dev chats over there on uh, the Discord where we go over all the new stuff in the coming to Neon Continuum, the current game we're working on, and where you can uh, get the uh, latest info on it and uh, give your feedback and tell us what you like and what you don't like so we can make the game the best game we can and also potentially play it. And I'm really hoping and at the moment thinking that uh, that the next one on January 2nd, which is probably the worst day for it to be right after mm-hmm. New Year's, is is going to be where we have our next playtest at. So be sure to come to that one. Hopefully the playtest happens. We'll, we'll find out in later shows if it's going to happen or not, but... Right. It's looking like it's going to happen at this point, but it's still too early to tell. And of course, I have Twitter at uh, Nexus Games INC One, and uh, all the links to mine and Josh's uh, links are all down in the description: Discord, Twitter, all that stuff, all YouTube. Right. And again, if you are a developer watching this and would like us to kind of critique your store page, let us know. Send us a message on Twitter or leave a comment and we'll add it to a future show. Or join the Discord and tell us there. All right. So with that said, come back for the latest daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where is on the art and science of games. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.